This is an interesting one. Ellis Danlos syndrome and fibromyalgia, two conditions that can be confused with one another at times, but are they linked? I did some research to understand this. So if you'd like to know more, keep watching. I have both Ellis Danlos syndrome and fibromyalgia. There are many people like me who have both or are suspected to have both. And some of us have tried to grapple with questioning the condition, the connection between these two medical issues. Let's understand what both conditions are, how they are diagnosed, whether they're connected and what various studies say about them. Please remember that I am not a medical professional. I am a patient with a patient perspective and I have the experience of living these conditions, talking to my doctors and talking to many patients like me. Nothing I say is a form of medical advice. So for that, please see your doctor. Now, what is Ehlers-Danlos syndrome? It's a connective tissue disorder that affects that causes a defect in the structure or processing of collagen, which is a protein. There are 13 subtypes of EDS and I have the hypomobile subtype. Diagnosis is based on the type of subtype you have. In the hypomobile subtype, your symptoms, along with how you do in the Byton nine point scoring system, helps you to get diagnosed or not diagnosed with hypomobile EDS. I know I'm rushing through the basics of Ellis Danlos a bit, but all for a very good reason. Because when we look at EDS in the context of fibromyalgia, the most important connection and that confuses these two conditions with each other are their symptoms. So um, what are the symptoms of Ellis Danlos syndrome? The symptoms uh, depend on the subtype you're battling and subtypes tend to have overlapping, overlapping symptoms as well. For example, if I have hypermobility issues, it doesn't mean that I may not bruise easily, which is a symptom of the vascular subtype as well. Now here are the classic EDS symptoms, but they're not the only symptoms faced because every EDS patient is unique battling varying symptoms. This list is only a basic guide to help us connect it to fibromyalgia. So the symptoms are chronic joint pain, chronic muscle pain, fatigue, temporomandibular joint disorder, which is the TMJ disorder, the uh, osteoarthritis, loose joints, hyper sk uh, skin hyperextensibility, um, dislocations, slow healing, scarring, tissue fragility, headaches, dyspareunia. I hate dyspareunia actually. Let's move on to fibromyalgia. Now what is fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disorder that presents itself with fatigue and widespread musculoskeletal pain. Here's more on the symptoms of fibromyalgia. Now the symptoms are, again I list them, uh, chronic joint pain, chronic muscle pain, fatigue, pain and tenderness, temporomandibular joint disorder, the TMJ joint, dyspareunia, fibro fog, which is a lack of concentration, stiffness, numbness, twitching, swelling and tingling of hands and feet known as paresthesia, tension, headache, sensitivity to heat, cold, light and sound, problems with urination, painful menstruation, irritable bowel syn syndrome, memory issues, restless leg syndrome, depression, sleep issues and anxiety and I'm sure there is a longer list than this. Now how is fibromyalgia diagnosed? There are 18 tender points on the body and that indicate fibromyalgia of which in the older guidelines 11 would need to have been triggered for fibromyalgia to be diagnosed. But as the Mayo Clinic explains and I quote them, Fibromyalgia symptoms can come and go. So a person might have 11 tender spots one day and only eight tender spots on another day. And many family doctors were uncertain about how much pressure to apply during a tender point exam. While specialists or researchers may still use tender points, an alternative set of guidelines has been developed for doctors to use in general practice." Unquote. 
So now, the new guidelines for diagnosing fibromyalgia is, and I quote again, widespread pain lasting at least three months, presence of other symptoms such as fatigue, waking up tired and trouble thinking, no other underlying conditions that might be causing the symptoms, unquote. What we must remember is that fibromyalgia can't simply be diagnosed through regular testing like an MRI, X-ray or blood tests or anything else out there. It works on the process of eliminating other conditions and on the symptoms present. But here's where the kicker begins. And I'm on to the question that I asked at the beginning that I said I would address. Are there any similarities between Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and fibromyalgia? If we look at the symptoms of both conditions, we'll, fi we'll find a great deal of overlap between them, which can make many of those with EDS believe that they may also have fibromyalgia. I know I've earlier mentioned one of this criteria for diagnosing fibromyalgia is that there are no other underlying conditions causing the issue. But I don't believe that if you have fibromyalgia, then you can't have, um, for example, rheumatoid arthritis. But that's my personal opinion after having spoken to patients who have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and other medical conditions that cause body pain, including myself, who has been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, EDS, endometriosis and other issues. Again, I'm not a health professional, but there are just too many people out there for whom fibromyalgia isn't the only medical condition in their life, making it tough for me to believe that you can't have another underlying condition to have fibromyalgia. Just sounds odd, odd to me. So is there a connection between Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and fibromyalgia? Let's break this down. We have to remember that EDS is a connective tissue disorder and connective tissue is found everywhere in the body and repetitive injuries possibly through laxity or even falls or through everyday activities like lifting a vessel can trigger pain anywhere, be it the skin, joints and even the ligaments. Let's also remember that EDS is rarely diagnosed. So if the doctor does not know about it or doesn't look for hypermobility or doesn't bring together any of the other EDS symptoms, then it could easily, it could be easy to only be diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which could then possibly be a misdiagnosis as well. But, but if we go back to the old form of diagnosing fibromyalgia, the 18 tender points mentioned earlier, it's very possible for these tender points, at least 11 out of the 18, to also be positive along with also meeting the criteria for hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Could you then not have both conditions? Because for some, hypermobile EDS can be localized to a few areas and fibromyalgia trigger points can still be active in other areas of the body. Here's a quote from ProHealth. And I quote, a 1993 study published in the Annals of the Rheumatic Diseases suggests there is a strong association between joint hypermobility and fibromyalgia in school children and joint hypermobility may play a role in developing fibromyalgia, unquote. My rheumatologist has diagnosed me with both conditions as I match criteria for both of them, despite some of the symptoms overlapping. But because the form of treatment for fibromyalgia may increase tissue injury and aggravate my EDS, we choose to focus on treating EDS more. What I mean by form of treatment? Fibromyalgia can be helped through certain forms of exercise, but that very exercise could be harmful to those with EDS. So you do need to be very careful in creating the right balance in treatment for your various conditions. In conclusion, from a patient's perspective and the testing I've gone through, I believe I have fibromyalgia too, along with EDS, arthritis, endometriosis, and everything else. But the only difference is fibromyalgia doesn't show up conclusively in a scan or a blood test. 
So until it can be proved otherwise, I will stick to my trusty rheumatologist and follow the plan laid out by her for my fibromyalgia and my Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. A bit of additional information here. As a resource, I would suggest that you read more about the studies on the EDS Fibro Connect and the confusion they present. I will link those resources in the description box. That's it for this one. If you have any experiences to share or even disagree with what I'm saying, I would love to hear you. So please express your views in the comments section below. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.